Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2022 Land Rover Range Rover. This is the L460, the fifth generation model. This is the autobiography. And trust me, the design is very much evolutionary. First and foremost, let's look at the key. Okay, this is to unlock the car, this is to lock the car. This is to turn on the lights for the follow me function. This is to open the boot and this is to turn on the hazards. Very disappointing key because the key is the same as before. However, you can get the optional remote parking bit with this car. Wherein you get a remote key, you have to be like 3 meters near the car to move it ahead and behind from a parking spot. So that's very much like a BMW or a Tesla as well. And that's not all, you also get an activity key or something of that sort wherein it's a smartwatch which you wear and then you don't need to carry this key. You can go for a swim and then get into the car. That's something even the Tata Nexon offers, so nothing big about that. Let's open the engine bay of this massive SUV. So there you see it says Ingenium right there. This is where the washer fluid goes. This is supposedly an air intake. This too, I believe, I don't know from where it's pulling the air, but you know, this is kind of locked on both the sides. So I don't know from where the air actually flows. There's insulation here, of course, there has to be. And yeah, the engine actually looks quite compact for a car of this size, which is humongous. Says Range Rover here, the grille has been revised. Earlier, it had some different pattern to it. Land Rover here, and the bumper is less busy now. Earlier, the bumper had some vents and all that, but now it has a much more cleaner look. The earlier model did not have fog lamps. This one does, so you can see fog lamps here obviously it gets a cornering function you get front parking sensors you get a front parking camera and i think this is the panel for adas which is not available in this car because you have to opt for the driver assist package anyways the lights are absolutely crazy again evolutionary design you get this animated indicators so they are dynamic swipe ones which uh, you know swipe from the inside to the outside and okay this is the low beam this is the high beam the signature drl of course these are digital lights, they are absolutely stunning. Firstly, they do this dance show at night when you turn on the car. Secondly, they have got around 1.2 million micro mirrors on the inside to reflect and refract light accordingly to give you amazing throw up to 500 meters. And then this is actually paired with the navigation system, so it's able to identify what road you are on and then accordingly make changes to the lights. Crazy tech. This Range Rover is full of tech. You know, what is the width of this car? It is more than 2.2 meters wide, which is very wide indeed. You have to be super careful. And obviously, it also gets the headlight washer. Your headlights are always clean, of course. And then you can see a lot of gloss black treatment. The panel gaps have been tightened, the shut lines have been tightened, you get the clamshell bonnet, you get the floating roof. So the typical Range Rover elements are obviously there on this car, which you would expect. From the side, you can see, oh my god, it is tall. Right now, I put it on the off-road height. That's the reason you can see the ground clearance is massive at 294 mm. Okay, there's something known as access height. We'll talk about it once we get inside the car. This is almost 5.3 meters in length. The wheelbase is almost 3.2 meters in length. And you know what, this is actually the long wheelbase model and the long wheelbase model has 200 mm of longer wheelbase which goes in improving the legroom at the rear but it's absolutely crazy long. What an unbelievable size this car has. Coming to the tyres of this car, this one is running on 285-45-22s. In fact, it even says Land Rover here on the black coloured Brembo brake calipers. Alloy wheel design looks really very nice, <laughs> you can see the suspension you know what it has actually got adaptive dampers so it has some known as adaptive dynamics this lexus has come in the way <laughs> anyways so basically what adaptive dynamics does is it monitors the suspension and the steering input 500 times a second to make changes to the car it's got torque vectoring by braking it's got crazy it's got an electronic rear differential to decide how much power torque it should channel to independent rear wheels so that's also amazing by the way 
there's a different treatment here earlier it was a little bit more busier and this line continued till here but no this is actually to break the monotony of such a huge car it says autobiography here so the variant name is written right there and these mirrors have quite a few bits firstly there's the camera for the 360 degree camera okay this light illuminates at night it projects the range rover silhouette on the floor and then there is another sensor that is for the weight sensor so it's crazy you can see the indicator functioning here door handles actually sit inside they come out when you unlock the car and obviously you get black finishing on the b pillar a pillar c pillar d pillar everywhere and let's look at the roof okay roof rails are not there but it supports up to 100 kg of weight if you put a roof rail or a roof rack that's also very much possible it obviously gets rear wheel steering and again tire size is the same at the rear but the wheels actually look quite nice so thankfully land rover has started doing good wheels finally or at least bought them to india thankfully now you can see this is a bit weirdly done i'm not even opening it but come on quality can be better but then the infamous land rover quality can be seen here let's open this this is where fuel goes and this is where air blue goes it can take 85 liters of fuel which isn't much honestly for a car of this size let's just shut this sort of a small silver treatment here because this just so much slab of body now they have to do something to reduce the visual bulk right now coming to the rear here is where the biggest change has actually happened okay because it's been completely revised right now the lights are on so you can see something otherwise it's just gloss black <laughs> no lights on it just looks like very different and unique as well kind of reminds you of the kia telluride so some inspiration from there probably you can see dynamic swipe indicators here lights are absolutely beautiful with this treatment on the inside and then it says range rover right there this is the reverse parking camera which by the way has a spray to make sure when you go off road it is always clean and then there's the number plate light as well now this is the rear fog light and this is actually for the reverse light but the reverse light also activates at certain speeds low speeds actually so that you can see better of the under body camera system yeah better light means better image quality of course the land rover logo right here pascal khan's fingers of truth hunting for the exhaust which is actually right below there so there is the exhaust of the vehicle dual exhaust and yeah you can see the underbody look at that massive fuel tank anyways let's do one thing let's open the boot which actually even opens with gesture and you get a high mounted stop lamp before that let me show you there are actually uh, two sort of antenna treatments one is obviously for the radio and the other one is for the clear side camera yeah there is a camera right inside that you get a rear spoiler and you're like where is the rear wiper you know in range rovers rear wiper is always hidden so it's hidden somewhere here the rear wiper is always hidden in range rovers now let's open the boot of the vehicle which means i keep this button pressed there it opens so typical range rover style of a split tailgate which means to open this i press this button and there it opens now the thing is it's just too tall to put in stuff so i'll do the next best thing which is press a button here okay to reduce the height okay and there you see the air suspension is dropping the car down and you can hear some amount of gases also sounding because obviously the air suspension is releasing the pressure and there you see i have put it all the way down now it's so much easier for me to throw in luggage like this and here you get a spare wheel which is full size yeah freaking full size spare wheel which is an alloy of course so they don't do cost cutting there only thing i'm wondering how do you remove it from there and there's this partition here as well you know now britishers love doing partitions so that's the reason they have one in the boot as well okay to close this i have to press this here press this here and there's this strap and you can move around it just to make sure that you secure your luggage properly and let's just shut this beautiful carpeting here it's kind of cool and nice okay there's a hook here okay there are two lights there there are two lights there as well there's a 12 volt charging socket yeah and this is actually the first aid kit along with what is this yeah this is i think wait a second it seems like a jack or something don't know exactly let's try and open this one ah No 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 this is actually the towing hook of the vehicle because yeah towing capacity is rated at around 3500 kgs so that's also nice i don't know who needs a tow 
this car or other cars <laughs> but anyways reliability is improving and here are a few buttons what are these buttons for so these two buttons which you saw was to increase or decrease the ride height of the vehicle this is actually to recline the seat so you press a button and there you can actually recline the seat so it's taking some time because the first thing okay it's reclining it backwards which is massive okay making some sound look at that going all the way and then once this happens now obviously the boot carrying capacity becomes even bigger there i've reclined it completely sort of <laughs> let's have a look at it from inside as well yeah there it's gone down this mechanism moves and makes some sort of sound as well it says top teeth are because obviously there has to get isofix child seat mounts too so let's do one thing let's actually put it back so here we are calling it back and it's coming so i can do that for both the seats because it's a 60 40 split seat but technically not because the center armrest only works electrically so there's a button for this if i press this button there i can decide okay enough of it i want to move the center armrest only thing is the system is a bit slow somehow there it is going yeah it's insane the amount of electronics in this car there's so many electronics in this car that for ota there are 70 modules which can be updated i find that it's easy to put it down but to put it up it doesn't work from here now the thing is this is the parcel shelf and you never touch the parcel shelf no 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 that's too mainstream who does that manually man okay you actually press buttons here to move it so if i press this button there okay i am actually moving the parcel shelf electronically yes everything is electronic in this car which means there is more room for things to go wrong which is not the brightest idea as such okay there's an auto function as well and then i can decide if i want to bring it back yeah there it is going back so that's also kind of cool how everything is so electric in this car talking about which obviously there are speakers here with the light both sides because this car is like million speakers of course and this also opens yeah to reveal the warning triangle let's just shut this and power tailgate of course when i press this it will put both of these up and there shuts the boot nice now it's time to get inside <laughs> okay there the indicators have turned on what indicators turned off over when i put the boot up let me see that yeah it did turned off and the indicators actually turned on below so this is something which you have seen in audi cars as well that's kind of nice and uh, it makes sure that when you're sitting in the boot and moving people know that the indicators functioning but yeah the hazard lights are being used rightly the hazard lights only work when you're halted i mean that's when you would open the boot of course right anyways now coming here Okay this is amazing in terms of comfort levels you won't believe there's 1.2 meters of legroom here 1.2 freaking meters so first things first i'm going to press the one button to adjust the seat and you see this seat is going behind this is coming out so it adjust in multiple ways 24 to be freaking exact yeah 24 way adjustment before that let me show you the width of the tires that's kind of wide <laughs> yeah it is kind of wide and it has got 12 ultrasonic sensors on the outside for the self park function which works under 30 km per hour which we will see once we are inside okay now the thing is that oh my god where is the privacy so <laughs> here you see i can put this up the sun blind that's kind of cool the doors are super heavy it's like insanely heavy doors but they open quite a bit obviously not 90 degrees but yeah still almost 78.57 degrees very wide opening doors and to get inside you have to climb up so it's a bit of a hassle however you can get a footboard which electronically retracts so optional bits are just next level in fact there's an sv variant which lets you customize to the moon and back which obviously cost much more the base price of that would go easily above four and a half crores which has a proper center console in the center yeah this is not a proper center console that one is a proper center console in the center and that's not all you get electronically retracting tables too so first things first we will get into this and i'll get into seats because i want to show you something really amazing which is that it's time to make a bed for yourself <laughs> so i'm just going to get into the adjust function and i'm going to press recline when i do that you see this seat is going all the way ahead and you won't believe it when this seat is actually going ahead it actually shows me a warning in the instrument cluster telling me to be careful but i'm sitting so high i can actually see the left mirror there the foot rest actually opens which is not the most brilliant foot rest i'll tell you why in a bit okay this has gone all the way ahead this screen is also moving accordingly so that it's in my line of sight and this thing is retracting and going ahead okay isofix child seat mounts of course amazing seats really nice headrest but not as soft and comfy as the one we see in mercedes cars because your head literally sinks into that lot of leather treatment inside in fact the roof also gets the leather treatment however you are very environment conscious so you can also get environment friendly materials 
for the leather rather than just having leather but they're also very much similar only says meridian signature here oh my god and door pockets are big enough you get this speakers okay sorry these are headphones not speakers and let's just open this it says land rover on it because these are just amazing okay and you know how do they work well simple the thing is that there are two screens here 11.4 inch 11.4 inch this is an 8 inch controller right there and you can just uh, like connect it with hdmi and see whatever you feel like now before that let me do one thing let me just slide to open this so this could have been much better let's get into seats and now i want to actually firstly shut this okay because i can so you press a button and there it shuts so this center armrest is also electronically retracting super cool now before we get inside we have to remove our shoes of course which means shoes out says autobiography here so where your name is written right there that actually eliminates at night shut the door which means i have to pull it okay everyone can unlock the car lock the car door handles have very high quality as well i'm just going to retract this so that there's good amount of light coming inside okay soft closed door function it paused for a bit ac vent placement here on the top this is like a one you see in a handbag or something of that sort but very high tech in terms of quality there's a light placement here but doesn't touch operate to operate that there are multiple buttons here so I press this button there you can see i can activate the light and there are multiple modes for the light as well which is nice okay now i can actually open and close the sun blind from here oh my god the whole quality okay it's a bit flimsy as such but at least it blocks the sun so we're just going to keep it open and then i can mute the volume from here as well and these are metal switches okay you can adjust the seat from here and it has got three settings you can see up to three people settings but when you're on the throne you're not going to share the throne with anyone and here you can see there's good amount of leg room and obviously great amount of under that support but let's do one thing let me open this so i press this button and there it actually opens this is next level of craziness in this car you might be wondering where are the cup holders and all wait a second i'll show you that as well so this comes out and the screen turns on here you have got okay two hdmi ports two usb c's as well and there's some storage space as well that's kind of cool however okay let me shut this usually cars luxury cars actually have this mirror here but there's none here so how do you look at your face simple there is this mirror which has been placed here it says range rover yeah that is how you actually do it <laughs> kind of cool and different but chances of you losing it is high pen holder very small pen actually and then you might be wondering that what is this how do i open this simple like i told you everything has to be electronic here so you press this button there and this moves ahead <laughs> insane okay you have to be a little patient i know it's much more faster when you do it yourself and then there are twin cup holders here why are they not electric i am so disappointed how do i shut this okay i have to press this button only and then only it shuts super duper nice and then you have got this wood treatment as well the car is turned off itself because it's like i'm going to be eco-friendly so that's a bit frustrating that it keeps turning off itself when i'm sitting in the car anyways lot of functions here on the screen so you can get into climate and decide how you want the air conditioning to be air quality air purifier ionization and all that the usual bits okay you can operate the blinds from here all the blinds so let me do one thing okay here i have decided to open or close all the blinds the thing is it's not going to work now because the car has decided to shut itself so we are just going to turn on the car from here yeah now i think it has turned on so here let's actually turn oh, okay there it's uh, shutting the blind so you're just going to keep it open for a moment you can just open yourself <laughs> this is a bit of a confusion yeah now it is open so i have to use this to operate it at times now let's get out from here rear screens i can operate the rear screen the brightness and i can like turn it on there i've turned it on it says select an hdmi source to start and all and this is actually a touch screen <laughs> yes this is a touch screen so you get a lot of stuff here as well to keep yourself entertained while doing your business meetings of course and then let's get out of here you can decide how you want the ambient lighting as well yes there are six colors right here and then you can also de decide the intensity of various lights inside so the rear passenger can actually do a lot of things but the most interesting bit is that here you also get heating ventilation massage option so here i can get into seat heat 
to turn on heating then I can get into massage there are multiple massage functions as well so let's do one thing let me actually decide I want massage I turn it on okay and I can decide which of the massages I want there are multiple ones of those oh ho ho the massage feels very nice let's just shut it for a moment and let's just adjust this which means that I actually want to move this upwards now here lies the problem when this is actually going upwards my footrest is gone for a toss now I no longer have a footrest so that's a bit of a problem my feet are actually hanging in air as such that is scooped out no magazine holder there there's a magazine holder here because obviously this seat does not go ahead it says meridian here because speaker system is given right there as well it actually got four zone climate control air conditioning here i press this button you see so much sweat has come because i'm feeling so hot right now now here you get a proper charging port okay proper means that you can charge your laptop if you so wish and then here you see two usb c's and there's a 12 volt charging socket as well AC vents placed here and here you've got some storage space as well which is oh my god this is so deep well that's what she said like a deep storage space there's a light inside actually and there's a screw also I don't know from where the screw has come but again wood treatment has been given right there so it's very spacious a car like next level in terms of space and all and you know what is that okay let me show it to you from here mm, this thing also opens you know why because this is actually the five seater there's also seven seater so i think that will be for the belt mechanism tweeter placement here on the top lot of crazy leather but no height adjustable seat belts which is a bummer there's a hook here you can see the dashboard looks really very nice so quality levels are actually fantastic let's do one thing let's get out from here and i have to actually wear my shoes because i kept them outside i'm not too sure if owners actually leave the shoes behind anyways it obviously gets the soft closed door function which means that i don't have to bang okay look at the amount of comfort on the seats i don't have to bang the doors closed i just leave it like this and there it pulls it inside to shut the door now coming to this side also couple of interesting bits firstly it tells you the variant name here so it's saying d350 autobiography along with the chassis number actually chassis number and there you can see oh my goodness beautiful the wipers also look so nice dual blade wipers of course but this actually collides with the hood so people will struggle in india with this and you can see that thick wire <laughs> which is connected to this wiper of course where does the washer fluid actually come out from mm, it actually comes out from somewhere there itself okay now i will do one thing i will show you a couple of things on the top as well so here there are two cameras so that is for the lane keep assist as well as for the rain sensing wipers and there's a fast tag too now let's get inside okay you can see the key actually goes in here let me shut this no it's not going to shut so let's open the door doors are so heavy now so heavy it's insanely heavy the doors like crazy heavy however they will actually give you auto closing door function accessory so what you have to do is you press the brake the door will close or there's a button inside the infotainment system you press that the door will close as well now this is very flimsy somehow it's very very flimsy this thing to open the hood of the vehicle and you can see the accelerator pedal is a bit like what we have seen in the recent mercedes eqs says autobiography here this actually eliminates door pockets are big enough and these switches also eliminate the problem is they are a bit finicky to operate these are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment and this is for child lock function this is to what reduce the ride height or what <laughs> anything is given anywhere these are the controls for the power windows and it's one touch up and down everywhere and obviously high metallic quality this is to lock the car this is to unlock the car the buttons are a little bit too low so you know it looks like i'm actually opening the hood beautiful lever to open the door says meridian signature here for the tweeter amazing leather treatment and there's a speaker placement there wood treatment here memory seat you can see up to three people settings let's press a button to get into our setting and there you can see it's moving in 24 directions the um, steering wheel is also moving it's going all the way inside and the seats are also moving under thigh support is also extending and all it's 24 way adjust which is kind of cool you see brown finishing here on the seats as well as the seat belts and there's a mix of black and brown so you can see black and brown tastefully done there's a proper dead pedal there there's only one button here this button is actually to open the boot of the vehicle and this is the button to actually adjust the steering wheel you can see paddles have this nice metal finishing they've really put a lot of emphasis on attention to detail so once we get inside let me soft close the door here and there it pulls it inside and shuts it first and foremost let's turn off the hazard lights now this seat is all the way ahead it's actually a distraction for me it's also telling me adjust seats or pass okay yeah just don't intervene adjust seats or passenger head restraint whatever <laughs> so what we are going to do is first things first i'm actually going to move my seat a bit so that this seat function comes here so let's get into the seats 
and I am actually going to adjust the seat, which means passenger, okay, reset here. I press reset, so this seat will actually retract and go back to its original position. There you see the footrest is also retracting, but oh my God, you're coming so close to the rear seat. What will happen? Come on, that thing needs to go back. Don't collide, guys. Don't collide. Please don't collide. It is going to be very expensive of a collision. Will ADAS function work? No, it realizes there's something behind. It doesn't do that. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to adjust the seats for everybody. So, I'm just going to come here. Okay. Select this particular seat and be like, okay, just fold. So, there. Yeah. It can actually fold that it's going back. This thing is going back inside and the folding starts. So everything is electric. I can fold it the way I like. Look at the amount of distance. Someone's camera lens cover or ND filter is actually lying in between there. And there it started making some sound which is a little worrisome for me. So let's do one thing. Let's actually cancel it. Okay. Unfold all. Which means hopefully this will go back up. Come on. And there it is going back. I'm not too sure how many people actually use this function. Can you see that ND filter is lying right behind? Okay, and there it is folded back, back into its place. You know what? Even the seat belt buckle, that also eliminates. Okay, I'm not kidding. This is actually eliminated. You can see a bit of the elimination. So it eliminates at night. It looks fantastic. And let's open the sun blind. I press this button. It takes its own sweet time to open. You know what? This car has a coefficient of drag of just 0.3 which is crazy considering this car actually looks like a fridge. So it opens quite a bit. It takes a lot of time. And if you keep it open now, and when you leave the car and turn it off, it will automatically close. And when you get into the car the next time, it will automatically open. So it's smart enough to understand that the sun should not heat the car. Yeah. And then let's open this. First it tilts and then, you know, it is not a very smooth functioning one. So this is the button to operate this. There it opens. You know what? This button is rubbish. Okay. It does not work as smoothly as it should. And that's the max it will open. It will not open any further. So the problem is now when you try to open and close it now nah, it sometimes tails and then you have to keep pressing it again and again land rover actually owns starter motors which does a better job in the harrier and safari in terms of the roof opening mechanism the sunroof opening mechanism so that's something which could be better and obviously this is super duper wide as well you can see these are actually the microphones so there's one here as well for the audio system gloss black finishing there this is i think for the sos function obviously it's got connected car tech here and it says passenger airbag. I think it has got six or eight airbags. Anyways, this is touch operated that you just touch it and there the light actually turns on. This is obviously auto dimming. This is known as the clear side camera. Just pull it like this and there it shows you a video feed. And then obviously you can operate a few things like you can increase or decrease the brightness and you can, you know, decide how you want the height to be. So I'm just going to keep it at the lower most position because the car is itself so tall now. There's no sense in having it on a higher position as such. Here you actually get a mirror and a light, actually two lights here and then this actually extends and this also opens. So yes, it blocks all the sun because privacy is very important for a Range Rover owner, of course. <laughs> there you see, very nice, amazing. Quality is also fantastic, like next level in terms of quality. Now the dashboard obviously looks fantastic, but there are two glove boxes here, not one, but two. There's wood treatment here. To open the lower one, you press this button, there it opens and it's actually decent size but does not get a cooling function. There's actually a pen holder right there and beautiful finishing inside. In fact, I can open the upper one by pressing this button here and then you can see, okay, it has got beautiful finishing. It also has this 12-volt uh, charging socket and a very, very, very cheap first aid kit. It's like super cheap. I don't think this comes with the car. Somebody's just put it anyways and there it retracts, push it and it shuts. The quality is impeccable. In fact, it's full of leather. The only plastic bit seems to be this here, which is also a little scratchy as such. Now, here is a center armrest, which does not move ahead or behind, of course. But there is good amount of space on the inside. It is illuminated and you obviously get the cooling function. So this is like a sort of a refrigerator. There's wood twin bend here. You just pull it and there, there are twin cup holders. Yeah, and then push it, it shuts. Here you see, there is a USB-C charging socket and a wireless charging pad, which by the way, has phone signal booster as well. So that's kind of nice, but I'm not sure that really works or something is more of a gimmick. Here, you can see that the cabin is really very wide. You get an armrest and then you can adjust the position of the armrest, which is a bit weird considering everything is electric there. I can actually put it all the way down. Yeah, so depending on the position of this, it will decide how low it can go. But come on, Land Rover, everything is electric. Why is this manual? I don't like that. Okay, again, this is a massive address, very comfortable, but not as soft as what we have seen in Mercedes cars, of course. 
which actually brings me to the fact that it says Meridian signature here on the dashboard and everything is inside this screen itself because buttons are very few. This is actually to turn on and off the system and the infotainment system and also for the volume control. This is the engine start button. This is for the automatic terrain response system. So when you push it inside, it's auto. When you pull it out, you can browse through multiple modes, which can be seen both on the instrument cluster as well as the infotainment screen. Now, the thing is that uh, this is having eight modes, eight freaking modes. And there is this button for the low range. There is this cruise control at lower speeds. All terrain progress control is what it's called. And can you see there is the EV light which is happening. There's no button as such in this car, but it does have the EV button which is not activated in this car because it is for the plug-in hybrid version which can be driven on pure EV mode as well. <laughs> now, Gear Lever feels really very nice to hold and then obviously, you know, it has this beautiful treatment. Finishing is nice, like a lot of wood, very tastefully done wood. Silver finishing, chrome finishing. There's a, I don't know, there's a sensor for something here. And the steering wheel feels really nice to hold. Beautiful design, really love it. Lot of leather, the horn. Horn is really nice and loud as well. This has this piano black finishing and this is sort of touch control, which is very bad because it's not that easy to operate. Obviously, it can change your command. So if you get a phone call, this will actually show you a phone call and also it has multiple purposes, but it's not that easy and fun to operate. And these are the controls for the cruise control system. And this is for lane keep assist. And yeah, this is for steering heat. You can hit the steering wheel. It says range over here, airbag right there. You get paddles here. You get beautiful wipers. Let's use the wipers right away. There you see the spray is actually coming out from the wipers itself. Yeah, that's how it is. And the rear wiper, well, that one is another level of wiper because there it's hidden. It comes out from the top and cleans the windscreen in no time at all. Has a delayed wiper swipe as well, which brings me to this screen. Now, this is having multiple colors like dark and light. Okay. There's something with haptic feedback. Okay. When I turn it on, it makes things a little difficult. So it has this click to it, but you know, it's not that fluid to operate with haptic feedback. So we're just going to shut this at the moment. Let's come out of this. Now, this is known as the PV Pro. This is 13.1 inch. It's a curved display. It's the biggest ever in a Land Rover car. This is for the self park, okay, which helps you decide how you want to park your car. Very nice system. Yeah, let's get into park as such. Oh my God, why is this heated so much? Okay, there you can search for space. The camera system is next level in this car. Just check this out, okay, 3D view, and then you can browse through multiple camera views. So what I'll do is when we're driving this car now, I will actually use this. And there, when I actually use an indicator or light or something that is also seen here, that is a level of attention detail, but the car color does not match the color of my car. So I'm a bit disappointed with that. Oh my God, this is just amazing. 12 ultrasonic sensors work to ensure this camera system is as unbelievably awesome as it is. And then I can also click somewhere here. So that's the 360 degree view. Amazing, this is amazing. And then, you know what? I can actually get into the off-road camera view, which shows me two side cameras and this front camera, of course. And then it shows me how's the differential working on this car. If you're going off-road, everything can be done automatically as well. And then what I decide is that I actually want to change this view. So I have an underground view, which shows that whatever I'm doing, I can be sure of not damaging the underbody of this car, which is kind of nice. Now let's do one thing. Let's actually get into reverse. This is the reverse parking camera. I can press a button to activate the spray. I don't have to necessarily use the wipers, but I can press a button to activate the spray as well. And uh, okay, let's just get out of this camera on road rear camera. Okay, firstly, and let's get into park. Let's get out of the screen. Now let's get into reverse. And you know what? It actually has a system very similar to BMW cars wherein this dances to tell you that there's some obstacle around. The guidelines are obviously adaptive. They have to be at this price point. That's not all. Here you can get into settings. Okay, all settings and there are multiple settings. So this is like <laughs> another one hour video if I go into this, but I'll just get into vehicle. And then I'm going to get into the cabin lighting. So there's six lights here and I can decide if I want the animation function. So it actually changes the color. Then I can get into my color and customize it. So there are different colors for the accent. 
background so accent here background there and then obviously for the footwell footwell light is just white and then there are multiple colors so probably you can say 64 colors for the ambient lighting here as well ambient lighting is fantastic because it works really very nicely here it also works fantastically well there as well so yeah finally land rover has got good ambient lighting in this car let's get out of this menu and you can see there is the usual bit like navigation phone media slope assist talking about media audio system in this car is next level there are 34 speakers 1600 watt output and it's a 3d meridian system which also gives sound from this headrest that's the reason the headrest are so big now because the sound module is actually placed right inside here sound quality is next level then there's something called slope assist oh, okay yeah whatever stop giving me warning this shows you the angle of tilt and all that stuff weight sensing okay when you turn on weight sensing it actually turns off the parking sensors because it assumes that you are in water the parking sensors will keep ringing uh, the sensor is actually in the outside rear view mirrors which help you understand how much water you have crossed in 900 mm is just insane and then you can get into various information which is basically telling me what is the current drive mode and what are the various things in it and what does it do it's a lot of reading to do so people who are bored in the car or stuck in traffic they can actually browse through eight of these to understand what mode is for what you can see grass gravel snow mud ruts and obviously dynamic eco comfort sand mode so insane amount of text because Land Rover is like, you know, you don't need to go to YouTube. They are actually trying to rob my job away by doing all this. Okay, and then you can configure it there. You see, I can decide how I want the differentials. If I want to lock the center or the center and rear differentials. Powertrain, I can have relaxed, normal responses. Steering, I can have light, medium, heavy. Traction control, less wheel spin, off-road, more wheel spin. I have done more wheel spin. It does not wheel spin, okay? Ride control, soft, normal, and firm. And they also have something known as dynamic launch control. And by the way, you can see the heads-up display is actually showing me something. So the heads-up display is a lot of information. It shows you navigation data as well. Now it is two meters far away. Earlier it was 1.8 meters away. So it's a bit further for sure. And now depending on the mode, the heads-up display also changes. Yeah, that is absolutely cool. Oh my God. You can see everything is moving because right now the ride height is getting altered as well so i'm just going to get into the dynamic one and as soon as i get into the dynamic one you there you see that thing also changes so amazing heads up display very good in terms of camera quality or rather quality of the heads up display so we're just going to get out of this okay here we are into home function it has a compass obviously wheel information will show you how the whole system is happening which i've already shown you before but there's something known as energy impact you're driving a range when you're worried about energy impact you are crazy it also tells you tips how to drive more eco-friendly okay lift accelerator hey, yeah then i would rather walk Anyways, coming into this particular mode here, okay, I can decide the ride height. So access height is basically drop the ride height so it's easier to get in and out. There's a normal ride height, which is what it is usually most of the time, and then off-road height, which will take the car all the way up. Then here into drive, I can decide brake hold function, stop charge system, and I can turn on and off the traction control system, which they known as the dynamic stability control. So let's get into this menu. A lot of things, Apple CarPlay and Auto Connectivity, both work wirelessly. It also gets Alexa, okay, for voice command, there's a valet mode, uh, you can get into cameras, eco data, dynamic eye is basically you can decide how you want the various functions to be. There are engine steering, gear shift and suspension between dynamic and comfort. There's a stopwatch for what God knows. There's a lap timer. Where will I lap time a car of this weight? And there's a G meter as well. So it shows me the pedal graph as well. I'm applying brakes and all. So there's a lot to play around with, which is kind of unnecessary in this car. But still, they have given it low traction launch, which helps you launch when you're off road. So that, you know, you don't get stuck. Otherwise, you get on the throttle and you're going to get the sword inside. Okay. Now, the thing is, uh, it also shows you the vehicle dimensions just in case you want to read this and you don't want to see my video. You can just open this menu and can do that as well. Oh my God, this is like insane amount of stuff. Weight sensing, tailgate event suite. I don't understand what that is. Okay. Air quality is something which shows you how, what's the air quality like on the inside. It is excellent right now. It's good actually. It's not hazardous because we're not in Delhi right now. And then I can obviously do ionization. I can purify the air and all that is also there. So that's kind of nice. And yeah, it's an unnecessary menu considering you have a dedicated menu to operate the air conditioning below itself. And it's super easy to operate which brings me to this four zone climate control air conditioning system i pull it outside i can decide what is the fan speed i want okay and then i'm just going to keep it at one right now i push it inside and there i can see the temperature so i can vary the temperature like this and i push it inside once again and then i can decide if i want seat heating or seat ventilation so they have tried to reduce the buttons inside this car by you know making it minimal so it's a four zone system, very nice air conditioning, works fantastically well. All the controls are here, not really physical, sort of touch sort of buttons. 
which actually brings me to the seat of the car because firstly we will turn off the air conditioning and we'll get into this particular setting into seats okay now you can control all the seats from here there's something on a seat heat which you can decide if you want to do there's massage okay let me decide this one and then i can decide intensity up to five intensities i can decide what is the combination i want massage type massage direction and the intensity you can see the screen is actually very 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 good in terms of quality it's absolutely fantastic a screen i really love it they've done a fantastic job with the screen it's not glitchy like what has been the case with most other glr products anyways let's come to this particular screen now this is a 13.7 inch instrument cluster so it doesn't follow the normal standard protocol of 12.3 and it's kind of curved below now it has this beautiful map and you can do a lot of things for which you have to browse through this finicky buttons so here you can get into various things and you can decide what you want in the info panel here i've clicked it and there it's a bit slow to respond at times and there i can decide what do i want to see i can get a lot of data okay the driver assistance system is not really anything to talk about and that's not all i can move things around if i so wish so here into display layout i can decide how i want whether i want a map so i can see a complete map as well with the speedometer actually going below and then i can also decide if i want it completely focused on god knows what yeah that one also now this is something which actually auto activates when you get into dynamic mode so i'm just going to put the display layout to dial right now because honestly dials look the best here i actually get into dynamic mode for the terrain response system and as soon as i do that you can see this thing changes completely so let's rev it a bit oh oh nice vehicle will shut down to conserve energy please bra uh, brake to continue what the fluff why does it keep telling me this stupid thing okay this is a range rover it doesn't need to save fuel ever okay let's do one thing let's turn off the car and when i do that it has this nice display there can you see it says land rover there on the heads up display as well so basically the heads up display is smart enough so we just shut the car let me take the key from here and let me open the door and leave the vehicle oh my god the doors are really very very heavy they could have done this better for sure okay it's not that great you see the you know what is the control for that all is vanished as soon as i turn off this uh, turn off the car that is and this thing still operates which is kind of cool and nice it's a very nice screen actually i really like browsing through it because it gives me all the information it's fast enough and it's not finicky at all lovely now the thing is tailgate event suite is something we missed out on start tailgate event suite so i'm just going to press this button you have to turn off the car to do it and as soon as i did that well there is the tailgate it is actually opening it's opened completely you can see the parcel shelf is going inside and i think now it will start playing music so if you want to go and sit and enjoy or have a picnic you can do this as well so i'm just going to do one thing i'm just going to shut this tailgate there i press this button and there it shuts and it always makes this sound okay now we're just going to lock the car there you see the parcel shelf is actually leveling itself and with the key in my hand i'm just going to keep this lock button pressed as soon as i do that well why are the windows not rolling up this is a feature i expected should happen come on windows roll up not happening now let me keep the unlock button pressed when i do that the rear center armrest actually retracts there is no sense in this but this is happening i was expecting the windows to actually close but no that's not happened instead the rear center armrest is actually come down but when i keep the lock button pressed neither are the windows going up no neither is the armrest going up so i think this is a setting issue probably anyways when i unlock the car you can see there the door handle actually pop out that's kind of nice let's get inside and as soon as i get inside it knows the time it shows me the land rover logo right here it does this nice sort of a display it says good afternoon because afternoon time of course and here also the graphics are kind of nice i've actually figured out that there is a setting inside okay using which if i keep the lock button pressed now the windows will definitely roll up so everything is to do with settings yeah depending on what setting you are in everything can work or not work so you have to just go and play with that i think the manual needs to be read for sure and then you can also do a setting where in the seats actually moved so make it more comfortable for you to get inside the rear seats as well look at the thickness of this glass it's so thick na it's done so that you know what insulation levels are just next level inside and then you can see velvet sort of finishing here
all right we are all set to go first and foremost we are going to actually get into this cluster mode because i want to change the info panel which was actually i mean this is actually showing me 16.3 liters per 100 kilometers which is like 6.1 kilometers per liter mileage which is pretty bad obviously anyways we'll put this map view but this will anyways change because we will remove this from auto and we will shift into dynamic mode and as soon as i do that this cluster also changes it says dynamic program selected that's kind of cool Okay, now what we need to do is we need to reduce the height of the vehicle. So I'm just going to get it to normal height because if I put it on axis height, it's automatically going to raise. So the car is coming down and lower. That's also nice. Let's turn off the air conditioning. Yeah, air conditioning off completely. Let's switch this to the beautiful camera system for the outside rear view mirror, of course. And that's not all. Let me turn off the traction control too. And there, DSC off. Okay, it says drive with caution. Let's get into drive mode. Let's get into sport mode as well. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator. Let's get out of this. Before that, I also need to turn on the beautiful camera system. No, I will want a 3D view. So we're just going to put it at the front so you can see the car launch like crazy. Okay, and hazard lights off, wipers on, and off we go. Turning off the traction control is of no use here, honestly, because there's just so much grip on offer. So Land Rover is actually offering a lot of engines in this car. In India, there are 35 variants itself. We have 35 variants of this car because there are at least three engines, and then more engines are going to be coming later. So right now we only get mild hybrid tech, which is a 48 volt mild hybrid system with integrated starter generator. However, plug-in hybrid variants will be offered later on and they will obviously be more efficient and obviously emit lesser. So that's also going to happen. Oh my God, I saw an F pace. That's kind of crazy. So this engine actually happens to be the diesel, which is available in two output numbers. One is the D300, which means 300 horsepower. And there's the D350, which is this one, which is 350 horsepower at 4,000 RPM. So this happens to be a three liter straight six turbocharged, rather twin turbo diesel engine. And the torque output is 700 Newton meters. So the lower output has around 650 Newton meters of torque with around 700 Newton meters of torque. You expect this car to be very nice in terms of performance. Well, you'll be a little disappointed because although it has the performance, the disappointment comes from the fact that it is a very heavy car. This one weighs 2,500 kgs plus. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy in terms of heavy weightness. I don't even know if that's a word, but it is a very, very heavy car. But you don't feel that heaviness as such. Over speed breakers, you can actually walk over them like nobody's business because that is the kind of ground clearance it has. So you can vary the ground clearance between 218 mm all the way to 294 mm. Okay, the off-road height is unbelievable. Around the corners, there is obviously some amount of body roll which you can feel. But you know what? The steering is light it's linear and it does weigh up decently well at high speed so it's a steering which offers you good amount of feel and feedback as well performance you can see it you can feel it that uh, it has this nice pull but everything is very linear here only thing is struggles in the higher end of the rev range and there unfortunately it goes out of breath very fast so there's no top end as such low end performance is really nice turbo lag is well contained and obviously aided by that 48 volt mild hybrid system to give it that boost lower down the rev range and then in the mid range it pulls nice and smoothly as well so the other two engines happen to be a p400 which is a three liter six cylinder petrol engine which produces like the name says 400 horsepower and then if you are feeling adventurous and if you miss bmw well they also have a 4.4 liter by turbo v8 engine which is sourced from bmw but not producing too much power it's like 520 something horsepower which is kind of mild considering bmw produces 625 horsepower in some of its cars so that engine is also available in the new range rover they ditched the 5 liter supercharged v8 thinking that why should we put effort making an engine which is not that great why whereas we can actually go and source the best possible v8 engine from bmw itself and bmw is like we are happy to supply what changes do you want land rover is like can we make changes to the intake because uh, we need to be able to water weight 900 mm which is almost a meter and the are like sure why not so some of the changes have happened to that 4.4 liter engine which is absolutely crazy in terms of performance it goes from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in mid four seconds which is unbelievable for a car of this weight this one takes 6.3 seconds and has a top speed of 234 kilometers per hour not that people will drive at those speeds even on the german autobahn because as you increase the speed you realize that this is a car best driven sedately it's not about dynamic mode here it's more about comfort and that wafting along feel 
in which this does excel quite a lot so the engine is super smooth it's so refined you won't believe it's a diesel engine that is the level of refinement unbelievable out of the world refinement from this diesel engine you can't hear a thing that's how refined it is so i love this engine for the level of refinement it has to offer and further improving the refinement obviously happens to be the active noise cancellation in this car so basically this system is so smart now it's able to understand the wheel movements it's able to understand the tires noises and then play reverse frequency sounds at lower speeds to cancel out the sounds which you encounter inside the cabin through the amazing audio system and even through the speakers in the headrest the result is the level of silence is so much that you do hear, hear a bit of the you know noise here from the a pillar because it's kind of upright and then a little bit of the tire noise especially on indian roads because the roads are so not that great i mean <laughs> now you've got padded shifters if you feel the need to actually make your own shifts and then when you do it it's not of much help because the car will not hold on to again it will upshift whenever it thinks it should and that's how it works although giving you some control over the gearbox is kind of nice because this is an 8 speed torque converter gearbox let's just change the camera view to the side one so we'll keep changing the camera view so you can see a bit of that as well So basically, uh, this gearbox is very smooth in terms of shifts. It's not very fast, not very eager, but it will not give you a single jerk ever. It will just pull nicely, relentlessly, swapping cogs without anyone knowing what's happening. So that's again very refined. Now this particular car is underpinned by a new platform, which is known as the MLA Plex platform or architecture. MLA does not stand for uh, Member of Legislative Assembly, although people. who are MLAs will tend to buy this car because it's so freaking expensive it is modular longitudinal architecture is what it's known as and i'm kind of baffled why there are no ada systems in this car okay let's turn on lane keep assist but no blind spot monitor no forward collision warning so they have actually not given ada's function which is kind of surprising because cars costing 120th of the price of this car come with that feature so that's a bit of a bummer and that heads up display also looks quite nice now thing is land rover has clearly told me and they've actually and i kid you not they have marked it in fluorescent on the vla which is vehicle loan agreement when they give me a car i have to sign an agreement saying i'm responsible for everything okay in that they've marked in fluorescent thing you will not take this car off road we know why because uh, they have only two cars in india the press vehicles and they don't want any damage to happen which will disturb the schedule of test drives with the journalists the thing is that we know that land rovers are notorious for not being very reliable as such although that is improving over time but still like last time when i took the defender one part came out and fell off on the left side near the fender thingy i just splashed some water and that came off so yeah still like it's not like a bulletproof reliable vehicle as such but it is the best range rover yet it is so unbelievable just amazing to drive it gives you that wafting along feeling you feel like the king of the road and like it's like you're sitting on a throne and although they told me not to take it off road they don't tell me not to drive it in mumbai <laughs> rains and mumbai rains are worse than off road trust me and that is when that water rating capacity of 900 mm will actually come into the picture okay braking performance let's try that right now has it lights off yeah nobody behind let's come to the last lane or the lane beyond the last lane as well service lane stopping lane and all yeah brakes are fine that little bit nose dive is there you can feel the movement Now let's make some changes okay why not we can so we get into settings first thing and i am going to get to the darker theme here so we will come back to the camera system which is here and i'm just going to change this view to show you a back view at launch which is kind of cool has it lights off revving the motor and off we go red lines are around 4 and a half thousand rpm and it takes a shift to fourth gear to reach 100 kilometers per hour so yeah getting is actually short but then this is a diesel okay it has this uh, hopping along feel on bad roads which brings me to the ride quality of this car now the ride of a range rover obviously has to be fantastic that's the reason first things first we should actually change the drive mode here so i am actually going to come into the comfort mode and as soon as i come into comfort mode this cluster obviously changes and you know what it's got like eight nine modes so crazy amount of drive modes here but the usable ones are obviously eco which you should not be putting if you buy a car this expensive or using if you buy a car this expensive and there's dynamic mode which just makes things a little bit better in terms of sportier feel on the acceleration and obviously uh, 
slightly better handling and better steering feel as well and then you know gearbox also feels a little bit more eager but everything is still very smooth and comfortable in comfort mode i can feel it feels so much better yeah look at that strong brakes as long as you're not coming to a halt because and the last 10% now you feel that nose dive so where were we yeah comfort mode is really nice the ride is very good but there is a problem there are actually two problems okay and both are interlinked first things first the indian roads have these bumps okay which are like can shake anything no matter how good the ride of a car it can shake it no problem but this car has 22 inch wheels with low profile tires and that affects the ride quality and the wheels are so big now you can feel the i mean wheels moving around over bad bumps of the road and then you can also hear the noise from the wheels so the cabin is really silent it's just the wheels which make that sound so ride quality is not impeccable like you would expect on smaller wheels or rather like 21s probably it would be better because high profile tires that would definitely help now obviously it's got air suspension handling is also decent you feel that weight if you corner hard but for the most part it's a very neutral handling car the problem is if you try to push it on corners there is body roll even though there's a lot of tech which tries to eliminate that body roll so that 48 volt system also has anti roll wires which ensure that the body weight is well distributed around the corners and this speed alert system is a bit irritating i would say ha okay now let's do one thing it's time to do the brake test which means hazard lights on and such a smooth braking system you don't feel anything on other than the nose dive it just stops dead in its track i think we need to turn on the defogger because it's kind of fogging up now and off we go has a light off and you can see some amount of loss in traction even the traction control is now on because i shifted the drive modes now otherwise it doesn't turn off the traction control on its own now we are coming across a corner where you can actually feel the roll of this car and the thing is you're sitting so high up now it's absolutely crazy tires offer good amount of grip and then since this puddles of water on the road this car will not aquaplane as easily because the tires are like really very 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 wide indeed which brings me to some other interesting bits about this car so global models also have a road scanning system which is paired to the gps and it will automatically scan the road ahead to see any imperfections and then it will adjust the suspension accordingly in india the system was there it got so confused it got so confused it just ran away like vijay malia did so that's a bit of a problem other than that they have actually made this car very easy to drive somehow in spite of the weight you don't really feel that weight as such unless and until you try to you know bully it into a corner which you should not be doing and it also gets a new file link rear suspension along with that the monocoque aluminum body so obviously it's a monocoque not a body on frame that's the reason the dynamics are quite sorted this uh, is now 35% stiffer when compared to before and i like us telling you the 35 variants on offer they actually 33 variants on offer lot of variants they always have this first edition and then you know this is the autobiography and people always confuse they are like range rover vogue is the best is the best no 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 that's like the base variant of the range rover the vogue and the thing is the way the naming has been done everyone thinks that vogue matlab ye badi wali range rover but this range rover comes in so many variants and the autobiography is one of the better ones and then there is sv as well which is like next level so it's absolutely crazy turning radius for a car of this size would be absolutely insane right you would be like how will i turn this car will i be able to take a u turn well check this out okay turning radius is actually under 6 meters which is un freaking believable why is it so less look at this i have taken a u turn without any issue whatsoever because it's got rear wheel steering as standard yes rear axle actually has steering capabilities so what it does is basically it turns by up to 7 degrees yeah that 7 degree turn is dependent on your speed so it will turn in the opposite directions at lower speeds i think up to 60 kilometers per hour to virtually reduce the wheelbase when it turns in the opposite direction obviously it will reduce the wheelbase so easier to maneuver this car but no taking away from the size of this vehicle it's huge it's so big it's so big that you look at everything else and you're like oh these are ants on the road and above a certain speed i think 60 or 80 kilometers per hour the rear wheel steering will actually move in the same direction as the front wheels to virtually elongate the wheel base so longer the wheel base better the high speed stability and it works really nicely look at look at look at the noise which comes from the suspension or bad bumps so it's not really 
made for that now that access height is valid at 20 km per hour normal height is fine and all that stuff for most part which is the standard one and then the off road height is actually known as the auto height once you take it to off road setting it will automatically decide when it wants to put it down and usually at 80 km per hour it's like enough is enough i'll drop it down now because above 80 km per hour the amount of wind noise and the aerodynamics which will get affected will be just way too much for this car to handle and i'm actually in yeah which mode am i in i don't even realize this but i am in sport mode for the gearbox so sometimes it's not as easy to understand what this car is up to so that's why i'm just going to click this yeah we are actually in dynamic mode right now you can see that here this is a car which can gobble up the miles like no one's business this is a car which you can take anywhere you feel like and oh my god i actually i'm not kidding i saw a statue of liberty on the right side maybe some other day when i come i'll take a picture and show it to you but what is the statue of liberty doing in this particular location it's absolutely crazy let's come to a halt on the left side which means hazard lights on I just love this car honestly I love this car it's unbelievable the kind of engineering which Land Rover has done with this vehicle is unbelievable of course but attention to detail and quality is fantastic okay let's get out of the 3D view left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator before that let's just turn off the traction control system why don't they just have a button for it wouldn't be like so much easier here dynamic stability control off left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator has the lights off and off we go Power delivery is channeled to the rear wheels for the most part. Why is lane keep assist not working? Because the lanes are not visible only. So this car is like, I don't care. I'm not even going to try. Let's see. No, 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 no. It's it's just not working. Although I've turned it on. So the price range of this car goes from 2.83 crores all the way to 4.16 crores, which is very expensive. It's way more expensive than any of its rivals, unless and until you obviously bring the Bentley Bentayga into the picture, and then that is another level of car. And then obviously you can compare it with the Lamborghini Urus. But a Range Rover is a Range Rover is a Range Rover. Period. There's no real competition as such which is so freaking brilliant this particular variant which i'm driving is 3.94 crores honestly you can get a very nice big fat house in india in most of the cities for this cost but then this is no less than a house on wheels trust me it's very comfortable it's very refined it's very smooth and it is the next level in fact this new platform makes it much more agile it's the best range over yet and then things are going to become worse with time because this platform can take electric motors so by 20 2024 they are going to come up with an all electric range rover considering the weight of this car they will have to slap on a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack just to make sure that there is some range with this kind of weight jokes aside it's an unbelievable feat of engineering the range rover was the first luxury suv which was launched in the 1970s and 5 years rather 50 years later 5 decades later it still is on the top of its game it's so amazing it's unbelievably nice the only thing which really pinches is the price the price is insane why do they have 33 variants no problem because everything comes by the cbu route you order today you will get it after a few months as the car is made from the uk and shipped to you in india that is fine but the price is insane considering so many car brands are actually locally assembling in india even their ultra luxurious cars i'm not talking about rolls royce or bentley because they're not doing any of that sort because their volumes are so less but mercedes is doing it they are locally assembling cars in india and so is bmw so land rover needs to do that considering it's an indian company an indian company needs to do, do this for sure so i hope with time that uh, we definitely get a more attractively priced range rover because as i see it it's expensive and it's very expensive it's unbelievable it's very good it's astonishingly awesomely phenomenal but it's also very 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 expensive and most people who can afford it would not really care about the expense but for someone like me who's like value for money i i'm like tied down thinking should i buy this one or not and that brings me to the horn because gaadi kitni bhi mehangi ho horn to sabse important cheez hai india mein <laughs> let's come to halt again because i want to launch it for one freaking last time to tell you that this is just an unbelievably super smooth and comfortable suv it even stops so smoothly everything is like next level smoothness here let's actually change this also view under body okay left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor what a nice pull okay it's unbelievably fun 
बिकॉज यू कैंट हेयर अ थिंग यू आर आइसोलेटेड इन योर ओन वर्ल्ड हेयर दैट्स अ लेवल ऑफ स्मूथनेस एंड रिफाइनमेंट एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टेक इट ऑफ रोड ना इट्स वेरी केपेबल ऑफ द रोड एज वेल अमेजिंग ग्राउंड क्लियरेंस विद अ टच ऑफ बटन यू कैन रेज अ ग्राउंड क्लियरेंस एंड देन अमेजिंग वाटर वेडिंग कैपेसिटी इट्स गॉट डिफरेंशियल इट्स गॉट मोड फॉर ऑफ रोडिंग फॉर स्पेसिफिक रिक्वायरमेंट्स एज वेल सो इट डज एवरीथिंग ऑन इट्स ओन यूर लाइक थिंकिंग वाई एम आई इवन सेटिंग हेयर इट शुड डू इट ऑन इट्स ओन आई जस्ट सेट बिहाइंड एंड मे बी एडमायर द सीनरी ऑफ वॉट दिस कार इज अप टू एंड द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच यू ऑल गैस वॉन्ट टू नो इज वॉट इज द प्राइस डिफरेंस और प्रीमियम यू हैव टू पे फॉर द बी एम डब्ल्यू फोर पॉइंट फोर लीटर बी एट इंजन यू हैव टू पे सेवन लैक्स मोर एंड ऑन दैट डिस्कवरी इज टाइम टू एंड थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग इफ लाइक दिस वॉक मेक शूर गिव दम दैट लाइक बटन ऑल्सो सब्सक्राइब टू चैन आई विल सी गैस इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो रियल सोन बाय